So tonight, we're going to talk a little bit about a problem with technology. So our phones, social media, all these things, are they good? Are they not good? For me, like I love technology. I love being able to be in my house and hit the button and get the AC going, right? Like, like that's nice. Technology has been good in a lot of ways. Um, about 10 years ago, I was in ninth grade. I was at Grassfield High School, and I loved to play video games. How many of y'all love, love video games? So I loved to play video games when I was in, in ninth grade, and for me, we didn't have Fortnite. We had, we had FIFA. So I played soccer. I, I love it. my favorite game, right? And so as a ninth grader, I got FIFA, and I would come home every day, and I would play it. And before a year was up, before a year was up, I looked at my record, and each game was about 15 minutes long. I had played 800 games of FIFA. I did the math. That came out to eight whole days. Eight. He said those are rookie numbers. <laughs> You're right. But for me, that was, that was bad. I was blown away when I was like, oh, oh my goodness, I've been playing for eight days the game of FIFA. Now for us, um, I've always been interested in the fact that every, every one of us, right, every single one of us have 24 hours in a day. No matter who, who you are, no matter what you've done, uh, no matter how powerful anybody is, you get, you get the same 24 hours that I get in a day. Um, and that time is precious. That time is precious. Um, and I want to share with you all the massive problem that we have. This massive problem involves our phones, involves social media, involves TV shows, movies, video games, okay? And maybe for some of you, that, that relates to you. Maybe some of you here are like, yeah, I definitely am on my phone a lot, or I definitely am on social media a lot, or video games, whatever it may be. The reason these things are such a problem is because they rob you of your time. They rob you of your time. I want to give you some interesting facts. Do you know that the average iPhone user picks up their phone over 2,000 times a day? That's crazy, right? Over 2,000 times a day, you reach for your phone. That's crazy. Do you know that the average teenager, most of us in here are teenagers, the average teenager spends seven hours a day on your phone. Now, I know that, that sounds like a lot, whatever. You thought eight days of me playing video games was bad. Do you know what seven hours a day on our phone comes out to? Over the course of a year, over the course of 365 days in a year, if you're on your phone seven hours a day, which, by the way, wasn't including homework or school, that came out to 106 days of the year you were on your phone. That's crazy, isn't it? 106 days. What would you do last year? Well, I slept about 121 days. I went to uh, Florida with my family, and I, I was on my phone for the rest. Like, literally, that's what our lives are coming to. And it's a, it's a real, real problem. I was reading something uh, last week. It said that uh, our, our attention spans, our attention spans used to be about 12 seconds. Now they're down to eight, to eight seconds. And they're saying social media and our phones and technology has impacted that. You know what a goldfish's attention span is? Nine seconds. Nine seconds. I don't know how you knew that. Goldfish, goldfish have a nine-second attention span, which is more than us, which is crazy. This is a problem, and I always wondered. I never thought, I never thought that when I was playing video games back, back in the day that it was a problem. Like, I never opened up God's Word and said, oh, yeah, here it is. Like, don't play video games that much, and, uh, and you'll be fine. But what is this doing to us? What is the time that you're putting into these things actually doing to you? And does the Bible actually talk about these things? Does it? I used to think it did not, but I found out it, it does, actually. It does. If you have your Bibles with me, I want you to turn to Ephesians 5. Ephesians 5. It says this, verse 15 and 16. Look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of the time, because the days are evil. 
Making the best use of your time because the days are evil. The first thing I want you guys to know is, is this. That what you do with your time matters. What you do with your time matters. God cares about what you do with your time. And the reason that it matters so much, right, society says that that is normal. Society says that, hey, if I play video games for five hours a day, like, that's normal. Every, everybody's doing it, right? Well, actually, it's not normal. As long as people have lived, they've done without these things, right? Another verse in Ecclesiastes, it says this, All things are full of weariness. A man cannot utter it. The eye is not satisfied with seeing, nor the ear filled with hearing. You see, our eyes are never satisfied. I keep scrolling, I keep scrolling, I keep scrolling. I didn't realize 40 minutes just went by. Like our eyes are not satisfied. Our ears are never filled. It says it in the Bible. That, that was written so long ago, but what? It's, it's just as true today as it was thousands of years ago. You see, the Bible says that these things actually are a weight to you. That we think, hey, if I just sit on my phone for four hours, like, that's really just me relaxing. I'm really just resting. Well, actually, no, it's not. These things, according to the Bible, and according to what we see in, in real life, they are a weight to you. For you, it might be video games. It could, it could be anything. The problem is that these things dominate our lives. In and of themselves, they might not be bad, but the problem is when they dominate your life. The second thing I want you to know is this, that you will never be satisfied by seeking what the rest of the world seeks. All these things, everybody is running to these things. And everybody says that, hey, this is where it's at. you got to get this new game. Or hey, you got to get on TikTok. you gotta, you got to be doing this. you got to be doing that. But these things don't actually satisfy us. Picture this really quick. I want you to picture in your own world, in your house, wherever you're at, I want you to picture there was no phone. There was no social media. No TVs, no computers, no laptops, no iPads. I want you to picture there was nothing. That sounds horrible, right? Like, like what would you do with your time? Right? Yeah, yeah. Like, what would you do with your time? Hey, pay attention, pay attention. You see, we think that it would be boring if that was the case. We think that we would be miserable, but the opposite has actually happened. The opposite has actually happened. You see, people in the last 25 years, a research said this. I'm going to read it to you. It said that in the last 25 years, young people have seen an increase in anxiety and depression by 70%. Young people have seen an increase in anxiety and depression by 70%. You see, we have problems now that they didn't necessarily have back then. They were there, but not in the way that they are now. We, had pro we have problems now with mental health is a problem. Our emotional health is a, is a problem. You see, girls and guys both, we're finding our value now on how many likes we have. We're finding our value in how many friends we have on social media. We're, we're learning about sex and the, these biblical topics from our phones and not from God's Word. It's a problem. And it affects me and you as Christians. See, it's a problem when, we could, when I could tell you, or if you could tell someone more about this show you're watching than about who Jesus is. Like, that's a problem. That's a problem. And it affects, it affects us, right? I want to read another verse in Mark 4. Mark 4, it says this, verse 19. But the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches and the desires for other things enter in and choke the word, and it proves unfruitful. You see, right now, every one of us, you're sitting here, and you're listening 
And I just read from God's word. So we are listening to God's word, all of us. Unfruitful. Unfruitful means that you can sit here and you can listen to God's word. And then you leave. You never do what it says. You never try to do what it says. That is what unfruitful means. It says the desires for other things enter and choke the word. You see, we the reason the Bible says that we do that is because, hey, I like doing this better. I'd rather spend time on my video game than get up in the morning and maybe spend 10 minutes with the Lord. Right? It said that we just, we just desire other things more. I want to I wanna do a little test here for you. In just a second, I'm going to put up some trees on the screen. Like, what the heck? What are you talking about? Right? So, I don't know if you know anything about trees, okay? But I'm going to put up a tree on the screen, and I want all of you, when you see the tree, I want you to yell out as fast as you can, what kind of tree is it? All right, you ready? All right, here you go. Get ready. Set, go. Apple tree. What's your name? Lemon tree. Arch. That one was kind of tricky. All right, all right, all right, all right. Listen up, listen up. Listen up. Why was it so easy? When I first said trees, you're probably like, I don't, I'm not going to know. Why was it so easy for you to immediately say what kind of tree it was? It didn't tell you what it was. I didn't label what it was. You looked at the tree and you saw the fruit. I need you to hear this. Pay attention. If I call myself a Christian, you should see Christ in me. It doesn't mean I'm going to be perfect. It doesn't mean I'm never going to slip up. But for you, if you call yourself a Christian, the Bible says that we are known by our fruit. The Bible says that we are known by our fruit. In John 15, verse 4 to 5, Jesus is talking here to his disciples, and he says this. He says, Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me, and I in him, He it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. The only way that you and me can can bear fruit is by abiding in Christ. Now, what does that mean? What does it mean to abide? It means to stay in. Okay, it means to remain with, it means to be connected to. Imagine if that apple tree up there, if I cut off a branch, then that branch, I could take that branch, it would be separated from the tree. Guess what? That branch that I'm holding would not grow apples because it wasn't connected to the tree. Well, similarly for me and you, we can't bear fruit. I can't bear fruit if I'm not connected to Jesus on a daily basis. On a daily basis. You see, the third thing I want you guys to know before we go into our community group, you know, we've talked a little bit about our time and the things that rob us of our time. I need you to hear this. Pay attention. You see, abiding in Christ, abiding in Christ requires us to give Him our time. It requires us to give Him our time. And not just on a Sunday, but on a Monday, on a Tuesday. What would it look like for you to give give Him your time on a Wednesday morning? What would that look like for you? You know, we talk about the fruit, right? Well, you're not going to see apples grow on me, obviously. So what does it mean to bear fruit for Christ? The Bible tells us. And the first three fruits that are listed is love, joy, and peace. I mentioned earlier a little bit about uh, anxiety and depression, how they're, they're through the roof now. 
all these, all these technologies and the social media and video games, and we're just so glued to the screens and how that has increased anxiety and depression. Well, do you know that joy, which the Bible tells us we can only get through Christ, you know that joy is the opposite of depression. Anxi- peace. Peace is the opposite of anxiety. You see, we, we sit here and we go to this all day. We, we sit there just like this all day. And we wonder, what, what's going on? Why am, I, why am I stressed as a middle schooler? Why am I going through these, these things as a high schooler? Now, I know anxiety and depression are real things. And I'm not saying it's only this. But I'm saying it plays a big part in our lives. And I'm saying, and I want us to know that this, this is a real problem. And I want us to be aware that this is a real, real problem. See, we exchange. We as believers, if we're not careful, we can exchange this for this. We can give up this because we can just live on that or video games or this or that. When's the last time we touched this? When's the last time you opened this up on a Tuesday, on a Thursday? Right? It's a problem that, that all of us, if we're not careful, we can suffer from. You know, as much of a problem as this is, I want to, before we go to community groups, As much of a problem as these things are in our lives, how they rob us of our time, we all have a bigger problem, and that is sin. You and I have a problem, and that's sin. That's the biggest problem of all. And that's why Jesus came, lived a sinless life. He died on the cross, which was the worst way to die, and carried our sins with him on the cross. That's something that as a believer, don't ever forget. As an unbeliever, if you're in here and you say, well, Blake, I'm not really following Christ. I don't know what that means to follow Christ. Don't leave tonight. Don't leave tonight without talking to somebody. Don't leave tonight without talking to somebody. Will you close your eyes and bow your heads for me before we pray? Heavenly Father, I pray that you would you would remind us that the way the world is going is not necessarily the way that we should be going. I pray, Lord, that these words that we've heard tonight, I pray that we would we would leave tonight and not forget them, but that we would desire to abide in you. To stay connected to you. To spend our time with you. Would you give us a love for you, Lord? I pray, Lord, for our leaders. I pray for our small group times, our community group times. Would you be in these conversations, Lord? We love you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.